Hello and welcome to uh, Budget Model Railways video. Um, I'm going to have a go at something we've been asked to do quite a lot, which is a shunting video. So um, that's what we're going to do. So I need to, I guess, probably do a few provisos before we do that. Firstly, I'm sorry about the background noise. We've got the 3D printers going in the background, but uh, hopefully that, that you can hear the audio okay. Um, this is how I do a shunting layout. I'm not in any way saying this is the best shunting layout you're ever going to see. Bear in mind that I use unhook, um, uncoupling poles and hooks. I have no automatic uncouplers. Um, I don't use DCC. Um, so this is going to be very much hands of God. Uh, and because I want to use a tripod to keep the film steady, you're going to see a lot of arm and things like that. So if all that puts you off, uh, please go to one of the uh, other channels that are more interested in those sort of things. But what I am going to try and do is show you what I can do on the shunting element of my um, shed layout. Um, it's worth pointing out also that um, there's several ways that I can shunt on this layout. So because of the way it's port, you've just seen this locomotive come in. I can run this as an end-to-end. -end. Now I've had a, a go with a number of camera angles. The only way I can show you everything, the train is so small, uh, it's like watching a, a rock star at a concert where you, you know they're in the distance and you don't really know what you're seeing. So the idea of this camera angle is that off to this side is, is the head shunt. So what I'm basically doing is you can see the end of the passing loop here but you can see all the sidings. So when the loco runs off that way, it's off to the head shunt. If I keep panning to try and do it, I'll have a go, but I think it'll get a bit jittery. Now, obviously I could spend hundreds of hours filming this and then Doug could spend hundreds of hours so that we take out all the movements and all the uncoupling and you just see the operational potential. Um, but I don't have time to film it and Doug's really busy with his A-levels, so he really doesn't have time to spend hours and hours editing videos. So it's gonna be quite a, a rough video this, um, but it will show you the operating potential. Hope you enjoy it, hope you stick with it, um, but thank you for watching anyway. So there's a number of ways I was just explaining. I can run it as effectively as an end-to-end -end because I've got a point over the back that takes me to the fiddle yard. So I can use this part as a country terminus and, and kind of ignore there's a track here, that's a branch going somewhere else. So I can have locos and trains coming this way. Now I can obviously have through trains as well, which means that I've got to shunt the yard, get them out and the loco continues this way. And obviously I can have locos coming this way, so up the up and down line, then shunting the goods yard and then going off that way. So for any single consist, there's three options. So that already gives you quite a lot of choices. Um, for tonight, I'm going to treat this as an end-to-end, -end, that this is a terminus. So the locos will arrive this way and leave that way. Um, but bear in mind, everything I do then, there's lots of other ways. I can't even begin to film every single possibility on this layout. It's ju there's just too many. We've got a storage siding here, a siding there with a coal yard, a cattle dock, a provender store, a good shed and an end loading dock. In here, there is an empty road that goes into a bay that you can put parcels and so on in. So the, the options are just about endless because even a simple consist like this, by changing the order of those four wagons, you get four different ways of shunting it. So even with that single consist, you're up to about 12 different ways of shunting this. So this is just to give you a flavour. So what I'm going to do on the first off is simply put each of these wagons into the relevant spots on the layout. Now, I'm not the world's greatest shunter. Um, I have prepped the track and the loco so it runs smoothly. I do tend to forget to shift points and things, but let's see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the brake van into the empty siding basically so it's out of the way. I find having an empty siding absolutely makes the difference because if in doubt you shunt things into the empty siding. Now what I'm using here is the older Hornby Terrier. I'm using that because it's a very reliable shunter. I'm also using Pico points because the smaller frog assists and I'm using one of our 3D printed controller boxes with the uh, components from China, which works very well. 
um, and gives me smooth running. Now I am running the Loco slightly quicker than I would normally because otherwise this will be a three hour video. I could have used any number of Locos to do this. Um, the Electro Trend Loco is very good, the little 060. Um, the Hornby J15 is exceptional, as are some of the bigger um, tank locos, uh, tender locomotives, the J15 uh, and some of my 440s and that sort of thing. And the head shunt will take them. Oh, so, and I have to stop and think because I am trying to talk and shunt at the same time, which doesn't work terribly well. So I'm going to move those there in fact. Now this is going to the end loading dock. I did say that it won't be particularly smooth. Give me a chance to get myself organised. There we go. However, I've seen some wonderful photos of derailments in uh, goods yards, so I'm not the only one. Normally I'm a bit smooth in this, but I am trying to talk and shunt at the same time. So I will try and concentrate a little bit more. So he's going to go into the head shunt, and then we're going to take that into the kickback siding. Do you know, that's typical isn't it, I've been running it all evening and now it decides to hesitate on a point. There we go, and that then can be unloaded from the loading dock. So now we want to get the box wagon to go to the goods shed. And that will depend whether I can get, I probably can't get all of these into the kickback siding. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to, oh I've gone that, I'm going to go up here, I'm just going to move this along a bit. And so I can put the coal wagon into the empty siding. It really does make you think this, and there are several ways of doing it. So I'm sure as you watch, you'll go, well, I would have done that. Well, that's fine. You know, that's why they're puzzles really, isn't it? There's a number of different ways of doing them. Um, I could use point motors and I might at some point put point motors on it. Um, but to be honest at the moment, I'm quite happy just to use them manually. I can reach them all comfortably. So I wouldn't really achieve anything. That's better. Now my uncoupling hook is simply an old needle file. Uh, let's do it that way. With a large bent paper clip put on the end. Um, I've got two or three of these in different designs, including one with a torch on that's quite handy. And that's all you need. Now we're going to be able to cheat a little bit on this one because the wagons are in the right order. You could make it fun by switching those two wagon, wagons around and then you'd have a more complex shunting puzzle. Because they're the right way round I can deal with them as a pair. Otherwise you would have to have uncoupled them, stored it somewhere else and gone off. Now for some reason that's derailed. I do occasionally have a problem over there. I've got to investigate that. So there go there. I've managed to pick up the empty coal wagon, which I didn't want. But what we're going to do actually, we'll collect the empty coal wagon, as I've managed to do that. So we'll pick up the empty coal wagon. Now I did some interesting reading. Um, coal was a the main thing that was transported on railways. So every single, just about every station I've ever small had a coal yard. But the, a lot of coal merchants preferred to unload from wagons straight into lorries rather than unloading into coal staids. Either way, it could take all day to empty one wagon. Quite often, like here, that wagon would be in the way. In my case, it's in the way because it's in the kickback siding. But sometimes very small goods yards wouldn't have had room. So I've got a problem because I can't reach over there because of the tripod. There we go. Um, 
so they would have to often be shunted out of the way. Things like cattle wagons had to be unloaded really, really quickly because the railways were responsible for the care of the animals. So if you left them too long waiting to get in the wagons or took too long to load a, a load of wagons, you then had to feed the, the animals, water them and so on. So they were a load that needed to be unloaded unquickly. Uh, sorry, unquickly. Needed to be unloaded quickly. So what we're going to do now, we're going to run round this because obviously the brake van is now at the wrong end. There we go. Oh, wrong road. I moved the point the wrong way. There we go. So we can then bring that here, run that down there. So what, one of the tricks I found with shunting is very much to do it slowly and to, um, I'll just do that so you can see the head shunt a little bit. Um, and that gives you time to check your points. And that's when, you know, your slow running locos really come into their own. So I'm running this a little bit quicker, partly to keep the length of the video down and partly also just to ensure I don't get stalling on points more than normal. Um, I have two terriers uh, and I've just got a third one, Southern Railway one, because they are exceptionally good running locomotives and they're obviously very useful being smaller. So there we go, we've dropped off our wagons we picked up the empty coal wagon and we're now running off back down the line the way we came. So that's a, that's a nice simple one. Um, you can then simply reverse it if you like. So what we'll look at doing, we'll run this around. And you could collect. Now one of the interesting things that happened quite a lot was obviously mixed uh, passenger and goods. Not very common on some lines but very common on others and one of the most common reasons for it was this which is the horse box. Um, they were high value not like taking cattle Horse boxes were high value because it was the lord of the manor uh, with his hunters quite often, if it was the hunt. Sorry to be politically incorrect, but that was the period we're talking about. Um, or it might be racehorses. And obviously if it was a racehorse, then that is an awful lot of value. So they were often tacked on the end of a passenger service, as was the odd good van, which was one of the problems with the passenger service, as, as we'll sort of demonstrate now, because We'll bring this in as a mixed passenger goods. There we go. I'll turn that round a little bit. So that's fine. We, we've got our passengers and they're all going to get off the train. But if you're waiting for the connecting service, you've got to wait until the horse box has been dealt with. Um, and that's why some country locos, they might have a 20 minute delay between a train arriving and a train leaving because they've got to dock the horse box or they've got to pick up a wagon from the goods yard. And that obviously meant that that had to go into the timetable if it was quite common. So if there wasn't anything to do, you'd then get what appeared to be a very strange wait while the yard was shunted. And that was particularly on some of the light railways because the light railways couldn't afford not to make most use of every turn on the timetable. The bigger railway's a bit different because you could have freight and passenger, keep them separate, which is why they weren't that common even on some branch lines on the big four. 
because it made sense to keep them separate. There we go, so the Lord of the Manor's had his horse box now delivered to the goods yard. And we can now get back to our passenger service. And what we can do in fact, is we'll put the coach into the bay Now interestingly, that coach I got a couple of years ago brand new as a reviewer, review item, it was £18 when the four wheel coaches were £18. I don't know, I still think it's an extortionate price for a few bits of plastic, as are the four wheel coaches, but it would be good to see it re-released. Now what that gives me the option of doing is I can leave that there, now I don't have another loco here, but I can then run another train in here. So I can have a train come in, a passenger train ideally, run around, ready to go, and then the branch train can go off out of the bay platform. And that's when the bay platform's quite nice. So that's another operation that we can do. Now obviously um, you could run specialist trains. So I have enough cattle wagons that I can run a whole rake of cattle wagon wagons in for, for market day. I've got uh, quite a lot of coal wagons. So you could do a drop off coal run and I've got a rather nice Electra Trend National Coal Board loco to do that. Um, so that gives you quite a few options. And then what we'll do coming this way, we'll run a little. So for me, that's an up and that's a down train. So we'll run a little up goods that's going to come in and it's going to pick up all these wagons, those four, we'll assume that the Land Rover's now been reloaded. Might be like Oakhampton where there's a, oh that, I'm gonna change that wagon. That wagon doesn't like that point. Let's get one of our nice LMS wagons. You will find this, um, when I first started doing shunting a long, you know, years ago, I discovered that for no apparent reason, some wagons, will cope quite well and some won't and you soon end up with a bit of a stable of wagons that you know will do what you want them to do. So on this occasion I've used the bay as the storage road and this is actually going to be a little bit simpler than it looks. Um, yes, so I've just got to stop and think, yes I think we can do this quite simply. So we'll assume that the racehorse is back on now what we will have to do is just move, I'm gonna move the camera a little so that we've got this whole siding. Um, what we will have to do is move the coal wagon out of the way because I need the head shunt. So we can pull that back out. Move that out of the way. That is a fabulous loco, isn't it? Uh, and I paid uh, 40 pound for that. Uh, which when you think of the price of the new ones, um, I think I paid £40 for my green one and then my little southern one that's coming I paid £35 for. Um, whether I pay the sort of 100 odd the new ones are, I'm not sure. Um, they are all DCC ready, which this isn't. Um, I don't run DCC, so for me, adding that cost price to these locos so that they're DCC ready doesn't achieve anything. And it's one of the reasons increasingly I've had to stop buying, sorry, this has got an old thick coupling hook. So this I'm gonna to have to use the hand of God. I've decided, to, we'll actually, what we'll do is we'll uncouple it there. These are the old uh, Backman wagons and they have a thick plastic coupling hook. So I was just saying, one of the reasons I don't buy many new locos now is I'm not prepared to pay the additional 30 to 60 pound that have been added to them to give them the capability to run DCC when I don't want to run DCC. Um, this is the problem now with the railroad range where they're adding the tech, which is all very well and good, except if you don't want it. Um, and so increasingly now, it's getting quite hard to find locos, especially with second-hand prices being so high. But you can see already that there's quite a lot of work involved. 
even in some fairly simple shunting. Although this is primarily a, a round and round oval layout, this element of the layout as a, as a shunting yard is probably the best shunting layout I've built, better than some of the shunting layouts um, because of the versatility of it. So you see the advantage there of using a short loco is I can get three wagons in. If I was using a tender loco, I can only get one wagon. Um, so, oh, he doesn't like that point, does he? It wants a clean, I think. Not too bad though, the first stall. Now what we're gonna do, we've had to move the coal wagon. So we've got to put that back for the coal yard. Hopefully you're not getting too much of my shoulder in. That's good. Two of the printers have finished, so I'm just gonna turn them off uh, because that will bring the noise down a little bit. Busy printing con controller boxes. As the orders for those continue to, to come through. Um, and then we're going to run something a little bit different after this. So what we're doing then now, we're just picking these up, bringing them out. And what I'm actually going to do is we're going to do it the other way and bring them that way. Bring them this way. Yeah, it's not a happy cattle wagon. I see people getting very upset when things go wrong on shunting. I'm not sure that that's worthwhile. It, it, it is what it is, I think. So that now is all done. We've done our pickup goods. And away we can go. And then what we'll do, I'm going to run something slightly different now, just to demonstrate a, another point that I didn't know until recently. Um, so I'm just going to run that one round at a bit of speed, so that I've got another loco it ready to go. Right, so bear with me a minute, we're going to roll those there. I do tend to use the front of this as the fiddle yard quite often. Now we're going to take these off. It's going to be a bit rough here because I'm trying to uh, trying to save time because you're watching a, a bit of an empty screen. And I don't want this to be like the latest Bond film where it was about an hour too long. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to run this little consist round. And then we'll bring it in. So I've spent quite a few years running primarily box wagons on my layouts. Only to discover reading a book actually on... Um, a lot of the light railways, box wagons were not that common in some places. Box wagons were for when the goods really mustn't get wet or were perishable. The vast majority of the time, a lot of the goods were carried in open wagons, um, often with a sheet, um, if the goods, you know, didn't matter if they got a little bit wet, but box wagons were not as common as I thought. That's why, um, a great many, and I've put too many wagons on there, I think, no, I can just about get around that. I think I can just get five short in that passing loop. Um, it's one of the reasons that most goods yards had a crane um, and a goods shed was for unloading open wagons. Now what we're gonna do, in fact, we're gonna put the brake van and the box van, wagon, whichever you prefer, in there so that we can run these around. And some of you will know that the crane on my layout is rather important. Um, it's just hidden there behind the two wagons because that was my father's. So he had my model railways in the late 1960s, which I vaguely remember. He then went on to military modeling, which is where, where I then got started for a number of years. And then when Doug was nine, he wanted to do model railways and that got me into model railways, not the other way around, which is what a lot of people think. Um, actually, I'm doing that the wrong way. But that was my dad's. 
Um, I've had it for a number of years sat in a box um, for all sorts of reasons, so nearly 60 years. Um, it still had bits on the bottom where it obviously been on one of the layouts. And so um, all I did was I painted the stone up so it looks a little bit better. And that's my dad's old crane on the layout. So that then can sit there and it can unload all our open wagons. And then he can come in and he can get the box wagon that's not wanted. And the brake van. Because a lot of times you had pick up goods, pick up drop off goods. Um, so stuff would be picked up, dropped off from the day before. Um, most good yards, goods yards were not this busy in real life. Some were. So if you had a very busy market town or something like that, or a country town, particularly a junction. So you could say this is a junction with this track and this track. And then you'd have two flows of traffic and that could make a, a, a li even a little country station quite busy. And my ultimate aim is to run this as a bit of um, uh, to a timetable. So we interspace it with the um, passenger workings as well. So there you go. That is really only a very, very brief demonstration uh, of what's possible with this layout. What makes it workable is the number of different sidings, the fact there's one, two, three, four, five, six different types of wagons because we've got end loading, good shed, provender shed, cattle dock, crane and coal yard. Um, and we've a number of spare sidings. So there's an awful lot that can be done in this layout. As I say, we, you can shunt with a tender loco and another time I might show that. But it works very well as a shunting layout, even though primarily it's built as an oval layout. Again, it is only, um, it's, it's around about five and a half feet by two and a half feet, lives in my shed. But as you can see, although I tend to use it a lot for running locos round and round, we've done a little bit of shunting there now, we're up to nearly 30 minutes. Um, you could shunt for hours on here with no trouble at all with a, a nice range of wagons, nice range of locos, even two or three locos and a dozen different types of wagons, you, you'd be more than happy here. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that. Um, if you have, let us know and we will of course film another one. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Please pre spread the word of what we do. With the big price increases now from Hornby and I suspect the others will follow, um, increasingly what we do, how to do these things cheaply and simply, is gonna become more important. Um, so please help us to spread the word. And thank you as always for your support. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series, click on the right for another video you might enjoy and please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment etc. Thanks again.